In this video, we're gonna be playing Fortnite on this 650 US dollar Fortnite entry level beast. Now, why such a small case, you may wonder? Well, honestly, I prefer smaller PCs. Let's see how it handles the game. Let's dig into it. Hey, what is going on guys? So, it's been a year now, give or take, since last time we made a Fortnite PC build. This time I wanted to go cheapest way possible, while not compromising on the gaming experience. And I wanted to go tiny this time as well. And yeah, this is the result of that. It will cost you roughly about 650 US dollars, give or take. And in this video, we're going to play on this. I wanted to show you guys what you can expect in terms of frame rate on both competitive settings. And with everything turned up to the absolute max but hey if you're all new my name is robin very nice to meet you for more details what parts i'm using everything is listed down below but yeah let's start by having a look at the pc components why i chose them and all the other good stuff so what we can say from benchmarking fortnite is that first and foremost it's not super demanding and it is possible to play and enjoy a steady stream of 60 fps average on much older pc hardware and so if you already have a graphics card laying around that isn't too old it might be worth trying first before upgrading also i always recommend looking at the used market if your budget is super tight since shipping out on either the cpu or the graphics card can give you a pretty poor experience and i don't want you guys to be disappointed and so with that said what components did i choose well after been running the game on this pc for several months time i can say that these components will give you that experience you're looking for no lags, no stutter, no low frame rate with everything maxed out. You should expect numbers over the 100 FPS mark, so a silky smooth experience. Now if you want to get an even higher frame rate than that, I suggest dropping down to competitive settings or you can obviously also go stretched and you should expect to get well over 200 frames per second on average. Obviously it is possible to go beyond 200 frames per second as well, but it would require a beefier CPU and graphics card and even faster RAM would be beneficial but yeah then we will be looking at a much more expensive PC and I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible without sacrificing the frame rate and I feel like this is a perfect sweet spot after been testing lots and lots of different settings and graphics cards and CPUs any chests maybe no no what a shitty area anyway guys on the upper left side corner you can see a lot of things there's a lot of things going on we got gpu mem cpu and ram now gpu is obviously the graphics card now right now the gpu is working at almost 100 load as you can see 95 percent which is really good that tells us that we are gpu bound as far as the cpu goes it's not bottlenecking the system which is great so right now i'm running on the ryzen 2400g and the gtx 1660 ti hooray we got three shotguns <laughs> how about that so and you can see the current frame rate as well right now fluctuating around 120 112 111 113 all right so for the processor the core central unit and the sort of engine that runs everything we know that fortnite benefits from a fast cpu with at least four cores and high frequency and ipc this is where intel shines the most at the moment now while it would have been a possibility of going with a core i5 for this build the end price tag for this pc would have been a lot higher so i ended up falling back on the ryzen 2400g yet again or the slightly cheaper 2200g the younger brother is actually an even better deal here the performance per dollar is better for the ryzen and for 99 bucks you're getting a processor that is capable of handling the game without becoming a bottlenecking disaster and will only so slightly become a bottlenecking factor with the competitive settings selected and so having this in mind the price tag increase for picking an intel core i3 or an intel core i5 is seen simply not worth it in this case now i should obviously add that i'm currently running the game on the slightly expensive ryzen 2400g at 150 us dollars but the 2200g is quite frankly enough at 99 us dollars and the only difference between them is a slightly slower clock frequency of a few hundred megahertz the 2200g is also lacking something called smt or simultaneous multi-threadening now these shortcomings however has very little to no performance impact in 
Fortnite and therefore picking the slightly more expensive 2400G is only worth it if you're planning on doing more heavy CPU loads where multi-threaded applications can benefit from the extra threads. So the numbers we're looking at here represents the 2400G but the difference between this and the 2200G is in fact negligible. What's more important is the RAM and the RAM clock speed which we will touch on in a few moments. Now another cool thing about the 2200 is that it comes boxed with a cooler as well and this is what it looks like. Now when it comes to memory we know that the way the CPU is communicating on the Zen architecture, fast clock RAM is beneficial and it will give you better gaming performance, therefore dual channel and fast RAM is the way we wanna go here. But what is fast enough then? Well I would like to recommend at least 3000 to 3200 at least. I've been using these, it's a ballistic sport 8 gig dual kit rated at 2666 megahertz which i have been overclocking to 3 gigahertz which has been very stable for the last two or three months i've been running them but since i know some people find overclocking complicated i recommend picking up a kit that supports 3000 to 3200 such as these and now that ram is on free fall it's not a bad idea to go even higher than that if you can afford it and 16 gigs of ram is always nice as well but 8 gigs is definitely gonna be enough to play this game maxed out. Now before we slide over to the graphics card let's have a look at the case first. So I've been a fan of smaller form factors and tiny PC cases for years and when NZXT announced the H200 series I ordered one right away even though it's not the smallest mini ITX case around. In fact it's quite big for this enclosure but still it's not too big to not having it on the desk like this. Not in my opinion at least. The H200 comes in a wide range of coloring options and NZXT also offers a slightly more expensive model with light strips and a smart hub. The base model for 99 US dollars is a high quality case with radiated support and dust filters and smart cable routing on the back. And when it comes to the graphics cards, I've been running tests with several different cards here and I found out that the GTX 1060 or the 1660 Ti is a great sweet spot. Actually on a second thought, the 1060 is in fact perfect but since it's getting out of stock right now, getting the GTX 1660 for about 200 and 20 US dollars is the way to go. As you can see the difference in performance between a GTX 1660 Ti and a 1060 is almost neck and neck and the 1660 Ti is actually a tad bit overkill for this game. The CPU is just not fast enough to keep up with it. And so therefore the 1660 is the way to go here. Now as far as motherboard goes, I've been gaming on the AB350 Gaming from Gigabyte for months now. It's a very stable and reliable board that I cannot recommend enough. But knowing that the B450 is out now, this MSI board will do the job as well. The difference between the B350 and the B450 chipset is non-existent for gamers. But the B450 ensures full compatibility for this second generation Ryzen right out of the box while the B350 chipset might require a BIOS update to work. That being said my B350 motherboard came with updated BIOS right out of the box and nowadays they should come updated and ready for the second gen Ryzen as well. That's my understanding. Now a year in of the release but for that reason I'm gonna recommend both. Now as far as power and power supply goes I prefer sticking to modular or C my modular ones especially if you like me like to build in smaller form factors where clearance and space is limited. I've been using the Corsair CM650M for about a year now on many different graphics cards without issues even the RTX 2080. Now 650 watts is however a bit overkill and although it gives you more than twice the capacity of what the system consumes under heavy load it will obviously not go very hot. 450 watts for this build is definitely what I like to recommend here. Now for storage I've been using an A400 from Kingston and with the fallen prices on flash based SSD 500 gigs worth of storage for about 50 bucks is a no brainer for this build. And so all in all a complete system for 650 US dollars depending on the current deals etc. With that said if you're also thinking about doing more 
more heavy workloads on the CPU, let's say you want to stream on YouTube or Twitch, I highly recommend looking into the Ryzen 2600 instead, as it offers 6 cores in total, and we got SMT and higher clock speeds, and this CPU will handle both the game, background stream through OBS, while staying above the magic 60 FPS mark. I'm gonna be back guys with a brand new video in just a day or two, until then, have an awesome day right?